Yeah. Well, Dex holding. I mean, he's always holding. His Russia is just seems so unbeatable. Oh. Oh, Dankus' is Russia just it. seems so strong. Yeah. Tommy K. Germany versus Dankus Russia. I, I, I want to be that honest. I think I will not win. I will bet against me. H how do you beat this Russia, man? How, how do you beat that? Dankus can't be Germany. He can't be. Dankus can't be Germany. He can't be Russia. And uh, we'll, we'll ban him from those two. Yeah. You fucking asked for it, okay? Here it is, okay? So, you asked for Russia tutorial. He actually paid for Russia tutorial, to be honest. But hey, listen, listen. I will show you today Russia tutorial, okay? I love you guys. So, no homo. Uh, so, what we're gonna start off by doing, you see this? It's a fucking toaster, right? You don't want toasters. So, you click Stalin Constitution, because you get PP, and PP make you go work economy, and you want that, okay? Research wise, you wanna go. So obviously you want to go for heavy tone because this is I, I don't know there's no other way to play russia really there is other ways but if you're up against a good player like i am always basically if i play a competitor game then you gotta go heavy tanks of vanilla there is no other way uh both for the reason that you can't get pierced by shit, but also that you can get enough of these bad boys to actually cover the entire front but you know they're mediums but twice the stats almost and way fucking better i don't know Let's go into it. So you want to go uh, T35, first research, heavy one, right? Because you want to rush the heavy two ASAP. What you also want to do is go for electric, electric, ah, blah, blah, blah. You want to go for electronic mechanical engineering. Hard word, I know. Then you want to go for a construction one. Epic construction speed. Build quicker factory. Yes, so let's do the construction cure. Um, for vanilla, it kind of depends. You don't have to build infrastructure, but for 70 days, you don't have work economies. So you'll build uh, sieves pretty fucking slow anyhow. And in this build, I want to convert. And what that means is that you convert the mills to civilian factories. So you build, basically, you get more sieves faster early on, which pays off more in the end, right? And also, you getting less mills and more sieves means that you have the same amount of consumer goods, but you actually use more of them if you get what I mean, right? So you just use more factories essentially. But for this build, since this is a conversion build, I'm gonna be building two levels of infrared Moscow. This will finish just after the focus is done, which is 70 days, and this is done in 74 days. So it's really fine that it takes like a few more days off of your uh, construction. It's completely fine. Uh, now here comes the dilemma. Where do you want to build infra elsewhere? So there is two things you could do. You could either build in like Kharkov for some steel also. Uh, you also want the good infra. But there is other places where you could... Uh, I'm not exactly sure which slots are the most IC efficient. I know which ones I like to do and they work. But uh, you, you want to go for something that has high uh, construction slots, right? You can build a lot of factories in it. And also you want high infra, right? For the days you're putting into it. Because this is 3000 IC. That is fucking, well, almost, it's a bit less than a quarter of a sieve you're building here to build sieves faster. So you want to go somewhere where it actually pays off. Uh, where does it pay off then? Well, as I said, you need to look something with a lot of building slots. Stalingrad is a pretty good slot. Kharkov works. You also get some resources here, but this is closer to the front line. It's more likely you lose it. If you end up losing Moscow, having Stalingrad, which is going to be your second capital, probably after Leningrad. Uh, but if Leningrad falls, you're, you're, far, like, you're not going to be able to defend this. It, it is a big river here, but if Finland's in the war, you're fucked. Don't worry about it. Because if they take Moscow, they're going to have taken Leningrad, basically. But Stalingrad is a good one for infra because it ups your supply in the region from where your capital is, right? And that's pretty good if you want to have good supply everywhere, right? So it's long-term time, long -term thinking, right? you got to think of a lot of different things here. But I like to actually also do Kursk because this area is very far for 
this is like everybody fights here once you lose the river which a good player will make you lose uh you got all these forest tiles to hold here and you gotta hold them otherwise moscow falls basically you can't really hold this as well as you can hold uh, karkov because they only have plane tiles here to defend themselves whereas if you defend here they got like the good ass forest line to fall back to and you're kind of not gonna be able to push back as easily so holding karkov uh, kursk is the best 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 um do thing to do here also karkov is very easy to lose because it's only plain tile surrounding it it is a city tile but as i said it's plain tile surrounding it the re uh, the likelihood of you gonna lose this if you lose the river is like a hundred percent so i'd say do not build it up uh today though let's just go with uh yeah, let's just go with Stalling. So after that, you want to put in the conversion, like we talked about. So you're going to start off by Moscow, converting Moscow, because it's the very best infra slot. Uh, it has 100% infra, and you also have seven mills to convert to civs there, which is fucking great. No complaints there. Then you want to convert everything in Leningrad. And before you do that, actually, you want to do this, just so you don't have to do the construction queue. You don't need dark here to just rush up. Fucking delete these. There's no reason. Put the sieves in. You get three extra sieves here in a good construction slot. You're also then going to convert and put this at the bottom. You're going to keep pushing this to the bottom below the conversions. But then you already have three sieves going in there when you got the building slot. So then you're also going to convert in Stanger. You could do the same thing here just so you don't have to alter the building queue later. Uh, do this. You also want to convert in Kharkov and in Kiev. It's fine if you lose Kiev later. It's just that you use Kiev while it's useful, if you know what I mean. So basically, this is going to be your construction queue uh, at the start. So after that, you want to start building in, uh, well, of course, Kharkov. I would also say you want to build in here in what's called Kiev. In Kiev, you want to build in Kiev. Kiev is a good slot to build in. You could remove this. Uh, it's no reason to really, but I mean, you get another seven there, which is technically a good thing. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Ba ba boom, ba ba beam. Very useful. You see that one more seven there. Uh, so yeah, this is basically going to be your start off construction queue. After you used all the uh, 70, 90, 80, 100 slots, you know, then you want to go move over to the 60 slots. You want to do them in an order. So they... Because uh, the, the construction order matters, right? It does matter. So you want to... All these are threes except Piskov, if you can pronounce that even. Uh, so you do this queue right here. And after that, it's just 50 slots. But you want to keep putting shit into the, uh, into the uh, 60 slots, though, when you get another construction. And also, of course, the 80, 70, 80, 100 slots, you know. Uh, for your production queue, since you are going to lose here, let's count how many this is. This is, you're going to lose uh, 17 mils out of your 32, right? So it's not like a great thing for your early production, but neither do you have much of an early production. So today I'm just going to do something like this. You keep one on, uh, two on support equipment because you actually need to. Uh, just for the tanks, you'll need to because you can completely go off a later. But for now, you'll need to. You delete the light tank once. There's no reason for you to be building them. Keep one on motorized. You're going to be keeping that for the rest of the game. Delete fighters. Delete that. You want to put in the AA because you want to put that in your divisions. You put like three on it. The rest goes on guns for now. Uh, this means like you can see. Okay. So basically, I'll have 10 on guns after the construction queue is done, which is decent. Not great. But like you'll have enough infantry from that. Okay. So when you start off. In vanilla, that is, you're going to want to send seven volunteers to Spain because that's uh, your maximum amount. So you take your seven volunteers you have uh, in your army. You actually have 13, but just select 13 of them. No, seven of them. Put them anywhere. Doesn't matter. You don't even need to put them anywhere. Then you convert the rest of your divisions to Cav. And uh, you will put them, just put them here so they're close, handy, you know. Then put this on either... So there's two options here. Since you have infinite fuel, you could train your navy and convert your uh, battleships into AA battleship. Basically, what you do is just you, you fit them all with AA, and this will kill all the nav bombers that tries to nav bomb your navy. Uh, oh, yeah, right, like that. So that'll put you at 15 air attack, which is pretty decent for a very small investment. You don't even put an investment into it, really, because you don't need oil. You don't need... Uh, 
well, the dockyards really either. That means you have control of the Black Sea. You don't need any garrisons really here. The only thing you got to worry about is paratroopers, which shouldn't be a big deal if you just keep one div on each, uh, each port. I've never had any problems doing that strategy, but for today, though, I am too lazy. You can do the same in the Upper Baltic Sea. They won't get naval supremacy, and uh, basically, you're all good for just not having many garrisons at all. You keep, like, one per port, and that's very cost-efficient, in my opinion. So, yeah, you can't really defend this up here. Yes, you can get naval emitted up here. It really doesn't matter. This is all plain tiles, really. Like, if they land here, they have shitty supply, shitty plain tiles, you know. Like, they, they will not be able to do anything, basically. For agency, it completely depends on what mod you're playing. If you're playing vanilla, I wouldn't invest into an agency. Because the things you steal are random, kind of. You can organize with other players in the multiplayer game you're playing that uh, you want this research to so only research, for example, mechanized in your army department. And then the only thing you can get then is mechanized, right? But the bad part about that is that sometimes somebody researches, it's just unreliable, right? Doing this is such a stress and you don't even need it to win. You don't need it to win. So I don't see why you would want to micro more. Like, I'd say this is micro more than macro, because it's literally fucking more intense than doing a macro, okay? So that's why counter <laughs> count is macro, micro, alta. Yes, so take your air at the start of the game. It really, oh yeah, right here. You take your air, just uh, hold shift, click all these bad boys. Uh, this is also for vanilla. You want to keep, uh, you don't want to keep, you want to put up 100-ish fighters and you want to put up 100-ish bombers. You put the bombers on cast, you put the fighters on air superiority. When you send these guys to Spain, they're going to be supporting units with both casts because nobody really has AA for Spain, right? Uh, neither does Germany think you'll have it, but once you've grinded a bit in Spain, you want to do add in support anti-air to your divisions. Uh, tank volunteers should be banned, but if they're not, you'll pierce the tanks, the light tanks that Germany sends with the support anti-air, so it's all good. Uh, it really should be banned. In any competitive game, it is banned. So... Basically, you want to send your seven volunteers, grind, get XP, and general XP, uh, like uh, traits. You want to go towards traits. The rest of the traits you can get in Finland, the ones that matters are Ranger. Uh, I would also say makeshift bridges. Not as much as ru on Russia as it is on Germany, but basically all you need is Panzer Leader and Ranger as Russia to win, which is good. Uh, it's even better if you have it on both your general and your field marshal, but it's completely up to you. Uh, I've won with literally zero traits because defending you have the same stats basically so I mean you do get bigger stats by the traits by the, on defending but like it's you, you're fine if you're just gonna defend you're fine or if you're just attacking plain tiles you're fine but I'd say pencil leader is a must in any case and how you grind that I'll get to in a different tutorial this is a Russia tutorial I'm gonna make this swift for you um, so you're ready to go now. You don't want to import one rubber for the factory you have unmotorized. You'll, you just want to start the game right now. Okay. Yeah. So we'll start the game and uh, you can actually take and uh, delete some templates. You're going to keep the tank template because in vanilla, it's actually exp fucking uh, expensive as fuck to do templates. You want to use this as your military police company. You want to use this as your 20 width, but it's going to look like this. It's going to be like this. It's going to be a 20 width infantry with AA and it's going to be great. Uh, beyond that, you don't really need these guys after the Spanish Civil War. If you want to use them for some meme like invading Norway, which I do sometimes, you can do that, sure. Like uh, veterans from Spain landing in Norway as mountaineers, they're pretty decent, but uh, not needed at all. Yeah, so, uh, mm -hmm. you got your Stalin constitution done now. You want to pop that bad boy onto war economy. War economy, obviously, because of fucking construction speed, uh, consumer goods, a lot of reasons, right? A lot of reasons. And uh, beyond this now, so here comes big question, positive or collectivist. If you're doing a roach build with air or without air, doesn't matter, you go left side. If you go a tank build, you always got to go right side. But dink is why? Because you get 15% more attack. You get 15% more attack. The, the, the little construction speed here, and the extra stability, which you can get anyhow, like this infra, the six rubber, none of this compares to 15% attack, 15% stats on your tanks. This is fucking insane. Nobody has this. 
Like, okay, maybe Germany has it, but like, you already match German tanks by just going positive. You can have 10 less tanks and positive is still better, right? It's still better because of the, the, if your tanks are dog shit and you have a lot of them, then it doesn't matter. I learned this the hard way. I played 2,000 hours of Russia. And uh, yeah, it was pretty fucking harsh when you went collectivist and you had more tanks. You were like, fuck yeah. But then you realize, oh shit, they're all trash. Even though they're the same as equipment, uh, equipment as my positive heroism tanks, they are way worse. And they do way less. So instead of pushing two German tanks with two Russian tanks on positive, you need four Russian tanks to push. So it's actually less like efficient to do uh, collectivist than positive because the tanks are dog shit, right? But next focus, I would say, I usually want to go for f uh, finish the five-year plan here. Uh, reason being the four sieves this early is fucking magic. And also after this, you can do a PP pick anyhow. I used to do socialist realism, uh, this focus. So you could do uh, free trade and then the sieve guy or the other way around. You can do like the heavy tank guy very early, but uh, it doesn't really matter. So if we speed up here, what the fuck is this? This is some weird-ass DLC. Uh, well, sure, we'll take... Uh, sure. All right, you got fucking mecha You got electronic mechanical engineering now, okay? So you don't want to pop that on anything. You're going to want to save up 30 days. Now that you got your 30 days saved up, and I mean saved up because it says saved, uh, you want to pop your uh, 49 days left <laughs> heavy one onto mechanical computing. Yes. And then you want to pump the 30 saved days onto this and boom, it's 20 days instead of 49. You see, magic happens. Uh, yeah, so now you just want to continue. Boom, you got your fucking bad boy heavy one, which you will never ever use. You want to pop that research slot directly onto the heavy two. And go for it, yeah. Bada boom, bada bim, you have the four sieves from the five-year plan focus and now you want to go down for the progress cult the progress cult gives you 10 percent research speed which is fucking insane you want to rush down for the research slot straight away this little pp pee -pee, it don't matter it don't matter in my world okay so you go down here and actually you want to save up days before you do that because right now <laughs> you gotta think efficient right so what i'm gonna do right here we're gonna go free trade yes free trade it takes down the research time on the heavy and it gives you construction speed. It takes research time off of everything, really. But it also gives you construction speed, production speed. <laughs> and uh, most of all, you can now continue with the focus. Yes, you got construction done. Well done. Well done. Now you want to go construction too for more construction speed. I know it's amazing. It's amazing. I know. Spanish war happened. Go there. Fine. I'm not gonna do it. Fuck it. I'll give myself 100 XP. Uh, 100 XP? Nope. Fuck. Doesn't work. Oh, uh, well, I'll do it later. Fuck you. Yes, you got positive heroism done. Great job. It's too late to start thinking about this now. You already committed. Go for the research speed. The fucking insane 10% research speed. You want to go for that ASAP. Boom, progress cult is done, Poggerinos. So your heavy tank is now about a thousand days off. What you want to do now, since you have 126 PP, you want to save days again. I know it's a fucking hustle, I know. But you want to do that, and uh, once you've saved up to 150 fucking PP, all right? I swear a lot, I'm sorry. What the f is this? Watch your profanity. Right, I'm sorry. Uh, You want to go for the heavy tank. Yes, so why I'm not going for the civ construction speed is because we're still converting. Sometimes I convert more and the 10% construction speed on converting is literally nothing. It's literally like less than a day. So it doesn't matter really for you. Compared to this, it's 993 days left on the heavy tank. Now you click the heavy tank designer and it's 922. Pretty good, pretty fucking good. So now you want to go down for the socialist science, very Pogorinos, and then you're going to go down for the research slot. Once you got mechanical computing done, you want to go on to saving 30 days again for the construction too. 
So now you got the 30 days, you want to put this bad boy on land doctrine. Yes, you're going to start with mobile warfare, because it's uh, the best tank doctrine. Very poggers. You put this on, it's 16 days left. Very cool. So now you got construction 2 done. What you want to do here, since this is vanilla and this is 485 days away, you you want to go for basic machine tools. So you want to start going down the basic machine tools for all the industry tech. Uh, you'll need that done pretty early just for the construction slots that you get from concentrated. Boom, socialist science done. You wanna go for the extra research slot. So what you might've realized is that Germany has not gone for the tank bonus. And since this is a single player test, I could tag onto Germany and give me the bonus in the actual time that Germany would do it. Normally Germany does like Rhineland into army innovations into tank treaty or just down to tank treaty and then Rhineland. But uh, in this playthrough, Germany has decided not to go for it at all. Uh, I am going to give it to myself now because any Germany multiplayer would have done it by now. It doesn't really matter. I'm just here to demonstrate what it's supposed to look like in your research queue. That you're supposed to have done the exact same things just with the German tank treaty, right? So I gave myself the German Soviet tank treaty. So you're supposed to have gotten it around usually mid 36, but we'll take it now. It's fine. You definitely want to accept this if you're doing a tank build. If you're doing an infantry build, then you don't have to, I guess, except it's in the rules, but some rules don't have it. So, you know, we're just going to go whether you have to do it and you actually do want to do it. So now you're already going to be researching the heavy two whenever you get the tank treaty, right? So you want to switch to something else you're going to research, for example, radios, and then you want to switch bank to the tank. That's going to be 560 days. You would have it faster if Germany did it, like how it's supposed to do it, but it doesn't really matter. All right, you got the research slot. What do I put that on, Dan? Because yes, you put it on electronics. It doesn't make a lot of sense since it's so ahead of time. But this does pay off. It gives you like 20 days earlier on the heavy three and 20 fucking days earlier is worth it. I've done plenty of test builds. Trust me, the 2000 hours didn't go into fucking nothing. So doing this that early will actually pay off for you getting more heavy tanks. And that's all you care about in this build. What else the fuck would you be researching now? Fucking what? Like Excav, hello? Like you have enough research slots for that anyhow. So what you want to do is that right now. It also help with the research speed along uh, along the way. So you want to do the infrastructure focus now so you can build in there and get the uh, better construction slots, basically. Uh, whenever you see like building slots pop up, oh, I can plus, uh, click plus one. You do it. You fucking do it, okay? Okay. Very good. Proud of you. All right, you got basic machine tools. Good job. And uh, now you want to go for putting them onto concentrated one. Why concentrated over dispersed tankers? Well, maybe you should have watched my industry tutorial, shouldn't you? Huh? You should have watched it. Why haven't you watched it? Sorry. All right, so you want to go for concentrated one. And uh, yeah. You now got 150 pp. What do I do with that? It's fucking obvious. You click the civ guy. Of course you do. You got the first doctrine done. So I'm gonna give myself XP now, because in Spain by mid 37, you're at least gonna have 100 XP in the bank, okay? You're at least gonna have 100 XP in the bank. So I always do anyhow. If you can't manage, then get good. Uh, so you wanna spend 100 XP on the first doctrine, right? Now that you got the infra focus, you want to check where they spawn. These are fucking random as hell. Because every time you click the focus, sometimes it fucking changes in the middle of the focus. It says it's going to spawn in, for example, Moscow. It literally just changes out of the blue. I don't know why. I've never known why. May I, sometimes I've done tests where I like build infra where it's supposed to come infra. Because, oh, I've, if I build it to level 7 and it, and it adds 3, I get level 10, right? And then it just switches out of the blue. And you get level 7 there forever. You don't get level 10. It's fucking awful. But now we have it in Vinnytsia, Dinoprevetsk, and Stavropol. Sorry, Russians. You're going to Google that on Google Maps. Uh, so you're going to need to look at the names again. Vinnytsia. Vinnytsia. Now you got that on the Google Maps. This is awful. This is horrible infra. You don't want to build in front of the river. Let's, <coughs> Let's check the next one. Dinoprevetsk. Oh, pops up right away. 
Uh, so yeah, this this is fine. You can build in here. That's literally fine. Uh, it's a level eight infra, and you're gonna want to hold this. If you lose this, uh, in vanilla at least, you're pretty bad. <laughs> I'm kidding, dude. No, but like, you don't want to lose this. This is city tiles with forest tiles around it. You don't want to lose this. You don't want to lose this at all. Um, if you do, again, you're bad. And the last infra is in Stavropol. I think I know where it is, but I'm gonna use Google Maps again. Stavropol. I knew where it was, totally. Uh, so it's a level 7 infra, you want to pop the two sieves in there. You want to drag them up to up here, and you let the construction queue continue its natural way. And uh, since you got the fucking, all the focuses that matter done now, you don't want to do the mills that early. So I'd recommend you do socialist realism right now. Uh, good PP, man. Good PP. Boom, you got the PP. You want to click on the popular figurehead. He's great. Click him. 15% stability. Helps a lot. Helps a lot. So now you want to go for... Well, you don't want to go purge for about another year. So you can actually... Right now, either you can do these focuses down to find the PCDI. Uh, which I would recommend kind of doing. Because you do want to convert later. Probably. If you don't want to, you don't got to do them. Because these are all useless otherwise. Uh, you don't got to do any of this either in vanilla. All this is automatic. Uh, if you're in a special mod or something, of course, you'll have to do this. Uh, but uh, armament and effort is kind of tempting for some people, I guess. But, like, don't click it. It's just extra mills you don't want to put on anything, really. So don't do it. You don't need them. You don't need them. You know that you don't need them. So now you're just going to sit without focus and do the research and get PP, guys. Boom, you got concentrated one. You want to pop that onto concentrated two. It's amazing, I know. Now you also want to, like I said, pop in the new infrastructure slots. All the good ones. All the good ones. Even Kiev. Kiev, you might lose later, but it's all civs in there. It doesn't matter. You, you don't want to lose mills. Because the, the civs' jobs is to build mills. I am addicted to civs, that is true. But you just want to keep do the, have the civs in good infra slots so you can build more mills later. Now you got your next PP set up. You want to click on the military theorist. Gives you 10% land doctrine research speed. Might not seem like a lot, but it takes off quite a chunk of your days of research. Uh, not really if you just look at it this way, but it does take off quite a lot here. It takes on like almost 50 days of the total research if you don't spend XP, but you will want to do that because you, you should have enough. Also with an attaché to China, sometimes you can send gun souls, so you should also have enough XP to do the doctrines and upgrade the tanks. If it's in vanilla, and you're kind of unlucky. Sometimes you can't do all the doctrines with XP. You might have to start it a bit earlier. But in this build, I'm going to assume you're good at the game. So when you got your 50 PP, you want to click on Promises of Peace. This comes up like every 620 something days. I don't really know. But it's every 600 and something days you can click Promises of Peace. You also want to do one as early as possible. Basically, after you get the military theorist, you want to click that one. You don't want to click it after the concern here. This doesn't really pay off as much as getting the two promises of peace early. It's really worth it. I tr Trust me. Trust me. Yes, you got your next doctrine done. And you should also have XP for this one. I, I, as I say, I usually do. I usually do. I'm going to assume you also have enough XP for this one. Yes, now it's late 37. You got over 100 PP. Japan's gonna declare in China around this time, between now ish and 37. Sometimes they do it earlier for no reason. Uh, well, you wanna send an attaché to China. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep 100 PP in the bank. Why not? So you might realize that you get these two researches very conveniently at the same time. Yes, you wanna click on the uh, machine tools with this one. And with this one that you just researched the uh, computing machine with, you want to do, uh, well, it completely it depends, actually. But you, I'd say you want to go construction right now because construction isn't that far off. It's it's a year off, sure, but it's only 280 days for construction three. And it's not a huge deal construction-wise, but later on you want to have it. And I don't like researching it later. It kind of fits into my uh, research queue, how I do it. So I like to do it this way. But it's completely up to you. Like I said, you want to, after the cost rails, you want to keep on filling up the slots. 
All right, so I sent a, a shade to one of these shitty nations down here, uh, Anarchist Spain, uh, just to demonstrate the China attache, but I wanted to get rid of the 100 people, I'll forget about it. So um, you want to now click on the industrial concern. Very cool, I know. All right, you got the doctrine done. You want to keep on doing the next one. Let's say you don't have XP for this one. I'll just say you miss XP on one of the doctrines. Then I'll uh, demonstrate it for you like this, that you can still make it in time. So now you also got the uh, the tool slot. And since this is only 100 days left, you want to save days with this tool slot just to get the extra 30 days on the heavy two. So you got the 30 days saved up and now you want to click on something else. It doesn't really matter in which order you do it, but you kind of want to go for concentrate or tools here. I'd say you want to go concentrate because the, the factories in the state, uh, max factories in the state buff, because you don't really need the tools yet in a way. So I'll just click on concentrated here while you also go for the heavy switch here. Now it's only 50 days left on a heavy. This is later than you would get it in a multiplayer game due to that the Germany gave so late uh, tank treaty because I had to do it for him. But uh, it's really fine. It's really fine. Uh, now you got 100 PP. You, you really want to save it, I'd say. You don't really need anything right now. So I'd say you can go ahead and click the purge. It's a, You can do the purge as late as like mid mid August 38. But I'll click it now. Yeah, because we got enough PP anyhow. We don't really need anything PP wise. So we're just gonna keep it like this. Boom, but a bit boom, pow. You got the heavy two. Thank us. What do I do now? You go for heavy three. You go for heavy three. Yes, you do. And also, funny thing, you can go for the T34 already if you want to. It's pretty cool. Or you could go for the uh, T44 later with the bonus. But it's completely up to you, boo. It's completely up to you. But I'd say you want to go for the uh, IS right now. It's going to be about a thousand days of research. It says at least because you're going to get a bonus later, uh, which will shorten that time. But you want to every day earlier, you get a heavy tank out, the better, right? That's that you should live by that playing Russia, okay? Heavy tanks are life. You never want to have an empty construction queue, so you keep on clicking into uh, sifts into your construction queue. You want to do them fairly far back, but not too far back. I'd say like here is fine. Do like something like that. Uh, you don't want to do too far back because you want to have the mills in the back. The back is reserved for the mills. Uh, Sivs so like uh, fucking here is also fine. You just want to do behind the river alley. Okay, you got construction done. You want to now go for the tools. Very cool, I know. Something your boy forgot to record was... Uh... Well, I kind of messed up by tank switching to Germany and giving myself the bonus, right? So something a boy kind of forgot about was the uh, the purge, showing the purge decisions, right? And uh, yeah, my bet I'll do that right now. All right, first decision you got is fucking uh, this one. Trial of the anti... I'm not going to read it. So you got a few decisions here, minus 75 PP, but you don't really want to pick. Because you got this better one. You get rid of the communism guy. Because it doesn't really pay off at all in any way. I've never seen anybody pick him. Except in like Atomic Hero roleplay game. So what you want to go for here is the Kalinin. No. What you don't want to go for here is this guy. Because this 15% stability guy you want with you. Uh, I did forget to click this decision I believe. And uh, I, he got removed in my playthrough. So I just added 15% stability. But uh, yeah. You don't want to get rid of this guy. You want to get rid of this guy. All right, and you don't want to get a silver off also, so yeah, you will go and get rid of this guy. I don't know what the fuck this is. I'm gonna call him, I guess. Yeah, sure, I'm gonna call him. Baba boo, that was close. Thank you, game. Thank you, game. All right. So anyhow, so when he says uh, secret of the generals, right? You have. Fuck! Alright, redo that. Fuck me. <laughs> All right. I'm not gonna mess it up. 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 Yeah, okay, okay. We're pausing here. Yes. I do go. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Alright, so now you got this one. 
uh, Secret Trial of the Generals, right? So not going to do a deja vu and click the wrong one again. I mean, I didn't click anything. I accidentally had the game running. So you don't want to click the bottom one, obviously, because you don't want to sell war. Or you do, because you're a big brain. And you don't want to get rid of the 15% armor attack and defense guy, because you will need that shit for your heavy tanks or your rip. Your rip, you went positive for this one reason. Don't get rid of them, for love of God. But uh, yeah, you want to get rid of this guy then. Ba ba boy. Ba ba boy, the last one you don't have to worry about. You just click the top one, because this doesn't really matter either one you pick. Actually, it does matter because you don't want to get rid of the <laughs> army regrouping guy here for 8% recovery rates. You want to definitely get rid of the top one, which doesn't give you uh, it doesn't give you anything really on the top. So you do this and you, of course, don't want the Civil War to so go to the top one. And that's it for the purge. Okay, so you got the purge done. Pogarinos, I know. So you got the purge done about the same time as you got the concentrated industry. With the concentrated industry, you want to start going for mech. Mech is very important. Uh, that is what you use for your tanks, believe it or not. So I would say kind of it's worth going for the motorization company. You have enough PP, really. Uh, it's not going to bring off a lot of days. But you could go for it if you want to. And around this time, also, you want to go down for this to get the land doctrine and research speed and also be ready to click the lessons of war. What I forgot to do, what I wouldn't actually have forgotten in an actual multiplayer game. You want to go max gun and two reliability on the heavy two. Then you want to put it into production. Very poggers. Uh, you're not going to put a lot on You're just going to put your five mils, uh, five out of the ten mils you had on guns on it. Uh, just for a startup production, that's going to be enough for you to gain some efficiency. It's not just about the efficiency. You want to have a lot to convert into the heavy three SPA later on which will help you a lot all right so your construction queue should look something like this you want to have like one sieve left in a uh, building slots around this time because in around december to january to march even sometimes you want to start building mills so you want to build in the highest infra slots like before but you need to make sure that you don't start too late with mills because earlier mills are better than later mills in a way uh, if you're going for a long-term build where you know you'll hold and you'll be able to push Germany back later with a massive industry, then sure, go ahead, build more civs. But uh, I'd recommend you don't you don't bet too much on the <laughs> on holding Germany. Don't do that mistake. Just go go safer out. Do all the 50 slots far back, all the 50 slots that are the furthest back, and uh, you fill them all out. Then you don't ever look on the construction queue again, basically until it says you have free civs to build with. So. You fill everything behind the river early with the, in the 50 slots here. Doesn't matter really which order either, because uh, it's going to be fine, dude. And that should do as a construction queue for now. Uh, Research-wise, now you got the land doctrine done. You want to continue with the land doctrine right here. You want to make it look something like this. You just do... Uh, <laughs> big stack on heavy tanks until you get your mechanized then you're gonna want to put like 40 ishmals on that all right this might pop up for you this is a fucking shit show they will literally redact six of your random ass units to go over here and never even make it there and fight you could have six units prepared here but you'll never win the battle if japan has half a brain so i would recommend you don't even do anything there Continue down to military re reorganization. Poggers. Now that you've got tools done, you want to start on the excavation. Yes, you need this. Apparently you need this. Yes, amazing. So you want to start with excav 1. Why not? You could start in another order. Doesn't matter. I'll start with excav 1. Work my up to 3. Work my way up to 3. All right, you got this done. Now, Germany's not going to go to war until mid slash late 39. So I'd recommend you now go for the armament effort because you're now building mills. Why not pop the four extra mills onto the heavies? Yeah, around this time, you also want to click on war propaganda against Japan. 
and at the same time do another promises of peace and click improved workers conditions. This will make you gain a lot of stability at the same time not losing any war support. It's amazing, I know. All right, so you got the doctrine done and you got the excavation done. With the doctrine slot, you use the bonus you got from the focus. You research it. Don't spend XP on that one. It's unnecessary. Uh, you also want to click on this slot and save it actually for 30 days into the mech. All right, around this time, Journey is going to be at war and you're going to be at war with Finland very soon. I'd say you wouldn't be at war this early, so we're going to hold up a bit on clicking Lessons of War. Something you're also going to realize if they, is that you need resources for these mills you have. Yes, you actually need resources. So you want to trade with the UK first because uh, he's the one who's going to be impartial. USA is going to be partial at this point, but USA, UK is going to be more economy slash total mob with war bonds soon. So you definitely want to trade with the UK first. And he was also the one who builds the most fighters, usually for the allies. And the air was pretty important. So boosting the UK a little bit here. Not boosting really, but you giving the UK civs here is really important for the Allied air production. So you're going to get the Molotov Ribbentrop packed here. You're, you're going to sign it. And what you immediately want to do is have PP saved up. This is a decent amount. You want to do claimed state and you want to do this individually for every single country. You don't do them all at once. It just takes extra PP, extra time, not extra time, but you don't save much time at all. Uh, these are all individual events that happen in a chain. It doesn't matter if you do them all at once. You won't get them much quicker. It's not worth it. But what I would recommend is that you start off by justifying on Finland because this will make you get the uh, get the lessons of war earlier. Which makes you get the heavy earlier, which is your end goal. Alright, so now you got 30 days saved up. You see the mech here, you want to switch it out for XCAV2. Now with the mech, you're going to switch it onto the mech. There we go, 30 days till mech. Very poggers. You send the ultimatum to Finland, which will make them uh, get go to war with you. So all you got to do is uh, have units on the border and grind them. But uh, I'll do a different tutorial for grinding because I don't see it fits Russ, just into Russia. It's for every country. I want to do a general XP grind slash uh, what's called trade grind on your generals, which will be coming out soon, fairly soon. Okay, you got your war goal. You declare on Finland. Yes, you can see I don't have divisions on my border. It doesn't matter. Uh, you will have divisions on your on the border with Finland in your gameplay. Uh, you could just rush them down if you don't want to trade, but I would say you want trades. Since there is a trade grind coming out fairly soon also, I could teach you how to do that better. And now that you're at war, you want to click on the focus lessons of war. Because you're teaching yourself something, I guess. I don't know, fucking know. But you get tank bonus and land doctrine bonus. Very good. In your war with Finland, you're going to want to click war bonds also. I forgot to do a second war propaganda. Uh, you can do two of them. Uh, you definitely want to do that just so you have the uh, the uh, war support enough to click the war bonds. You need 79%. You actually need more, uh, so 80. But uh, yes, all you need to do is either don't do two promises of peace or you do uh, two war, war propagandists along with the promises of peace. You want to click war bonds and uh, then you grind Finland until it's over. Yeah, so once you're at war with Finland, you also want to start justifying on the other states. You justify on them one by one. So now you got your mechanized, you want to put that into your production. As you can see, I'm not microing the resources. You should, because you're in a multiplayer game. I'm in a single player game showing you this. But uh, you want to do that. And when you put the mech into production, you want to go up to around, I'd say... 20 to 30 is good for now, but I'll go 30 right now instead. Uh, 31 just to use all the rubber we're going to be importing. Uh, so you want to import from the UK yet again. And uh, yeah, with this research slot, you're going to want to go for the next XGAV. XGAV 3, very poggers. So once you've done Lessons of War, first thing you do is click here. You want to go down all the way to the next research slot. 
since you can't keep it paused and multiplayer, you want to do this kind of quickly. You want to yet again switch away the tank and then switch it back with a bonus. Now it's only a year away in September 39. So you'd have this way sooner multiplayer, not only because of the tank treaty, but because, well, yeah, well, mostly because of the tank treaty. Uh, you'd have this, technically, you can have this around June, July 40, if you're if you really micro all your research but like that's the earliest i've gotten it early uh and mods you can get it earlier or later sometimes depends what mod you're playing and about this time i think you can cut your gun production completely uh if you could have probably done it when you got the heavy tanks that's usually what i do it doesn't matter really it's only five mils but like five mils adds on you know so i'm gonna go ahead and put that down to zero Put the AA on one and put the support equipment on one. This should be enough production for your army for the rest of the game. Also, now that you got the Baltics, you want to switch over your garrison to the horses. Very good because they have more uh, military police. They have more suppression. Uh, suppression is eight here, whereas the normal infantry unit has actually more. But like that's only because it's bigger because uh, the suppression on a horse is bigger. So this is an 18 width infantry has 13.5 suppression. Uh, this cavalry unit, uh, if you just add on like this, now it's only 16 width and it has uh, 16 suppression. You do wanna sometimes upgrade these like as Germany. I don't think it's necessary as Russia, uh, but sure you, go, you can go ahead if you have the extra XP. Now that you got the XGAV2, you wanna put that on tools. Now that you got the Blitzkrieg Doctrine, you want to keep on going, and you got two bonuses now from your uh, from your focus. You're only going to need two more researchers after the bonuses are used for your Doctrine. So I'd say you want to need 200 more PP, but since you're so ahead on the research already, which I showed you already spent a lot of XP on it, you probably can make it without it. Because, yeah, like, it shouldn't be much of a problem. You can do without the full Doctrine for the start of the war. I usually miss it out. Uh, it's completely fine. You don't need the extra 20% breakthrough at the start of the war. It's mostly for your counter pushes that they're very important. So, yeah. XGAV3 goes into Concentrated 4. So, these are pretty aligned research-wise. So around when 1940 comes around, you will you'll probably have the economy where it's it's still worth to be free trade, but not that much. I'd recommend around early early to mid 40, depending on how the allies are trading, you want to go down to export focus. You don't want to go down to limited. That'll kind of kill the allies trade and they'll also have to go down. And then when you need their trade, you don't have it because they're already down in economy law. It, optimally, you all want to be on free trade, but since the allies are usual and export, you also want to go down on export. This will free up a lot of resources. You don't even need to trade anymore for all your magnificent sieves, except for the rubber, which is fine. And uh, yeah, keep on going now for the research slot. Boom, you got your fifth research slot, this is. And with this one, you want to start researching radios. Yes. The long-awaited, actually, it kind of depends, but I'd say, yeah, go for radio. You can do that. Uh, the focus is don't really matter anymore. You don't need to click anything. You just say PP, and you'll have a lot of PP to spend on all your stuff here, attaches to the allies, etc. All right, once you got this research right here, you got the uh, land doctrine done, you want to save up 30 days for the heavy tank. All right, 30 days saved up. Now you want to switch it over to, well, I'd recommend actually not going for construction here. You definitely want to go on one of the uh, companies here that you'll want. Uh, you want to have like level two and three of these, all of these by the war. So you kind of got to start on them now or you'll be too late on him. I'll start off by going maintenance company. And you switch over to the heavy, 90 days left. 
After radius, you want to pop that bad boy onto signal companies, which are very important in vanilla, at least for tanks. Helps out a lot. Now that you got your tools, you want to save it. It's done almost at the same time as the heavy. And uh, actually, you don't need to save it because you were going to put the heavy slot on that. So yeah, let's just go construction 4 because it's not mostly for the construction speed. It's mostly for the resources because you're very limited on the resources in the allies. Not as much as the axis, but you're still limited. So yeah. Now you want to pop that bad boy onto this. And yes, there is a meme in vanilla at least where you go for the two year height of time bonus on the T-54. And when you get it, you start producing them like hell and you start pushing Germany back. Uh, don't really think it's necessary to go for. The heavy is better, believe it or not, but it's up to you. Heavy upgrade wise, you want to go for max main gun. Now you got two choices, uh, two choices to make. Depending on how much XP you have and depending on what plan you want to have here, you could either max out the armor with XP, it'll cost a lot, then I'd recommend you don't go for reliability because, uh, yeah, you have low reliability on heavy tanks that's fucking trash, right? But they're super fucking good. Going for reliability is just XP you really don't have in vanilla. Or you could just go for max main gun and good reliability. This will make you take way less losses and uh, in battle you'll be way more fine off. In this, I'm just gonna max out the armor and uh, we'll go for it like that. Now you got it in production, you'll see you have way less resources. Shouldn't be a really a problem is the, if the allies are trading you. Well, uh, what you could do is go down to limited, but it shouldn't be needed, like I said, it really shouldn't be needed. At this point, you probably wanna switch out the steel trade to the US. Uh, Cause he's probably gonna need all the, uh, the UK steel along with uh, your steel is all going to be bought up. So traded with the USA at this point ish, just to help out him and getting his economy out because uh, he's going to be at war economy very soon. Now you got concentrated done. You want to go over to logistics and research that very important too. supplies very dire in Russia, as you might know. Yeah, well, with the concentrated also, you're going to want to Put in the extra uh, construction slots here. You want to pop them up to max. And the better moss, the better building slots, you want to pop them into. At this point, I usually don't even care about the building order. Because uh, it doesn't really matter. It's you're, you're, we're, we're talking days here. We're not even talking like a full tank of a difference here, really. If you want to max out like so you get one more tank for war or whatever, you can do that. But I really say, I, I really don't think it's necessary. Also, when you got the maintenance, you want to go for maintenance too here. And uh, I forgot about the land doctrine, which is fine. It's fine. Like I said, it's fine. You just switch over the construction again. Uh, this happens to me all the time. This is like an actual playthrough. Uh, so you just want to, if you forget the doctrine like I did here, don't forget the doctrine. But if you do, just switch it over again. It's going to be fine. This is, you already got the doctrines that will carry you through the whole war. But uh, backhand blow, etc., and these buffs are really good, but you will do find it without them. All right, Germany went to war with Poland a bit later, but uh, single player, this one happened in the multiplayer game. As you can see here now, we're trading 33 civs. In an actual multiplayer game, you'd be getting over 100 civs by now. Uh, and trade. Actually, by Danzig of War, in a good com multiplayer game, you should be getting around 100 civs by war, at least in a vanilla game. Uh, depends on the skills of the allies, but if you're uh, if you're fighting in a lower skilled game, then it doesn't matter that you don't get the trade, because then Germany's probably also going to be less good, and you won't need the extra trade to win. Uh, the milk count's going to differ from legit, it's going to differ from around 200 mils to 300 mils to 350, depending on your allies, depending on you, how much you macro everything. But I'd say as it's fine anyway. Uh, you can get 50 tanks, you can get 20 tanks, depending on the game. It's huge differences compared to what lobbies you're in. Uh, but it's all up to the allies, really, how much they trade you since day one later on etc. during the war, after the war, no, not really, but you know what I mean. After the UK doesn't have any resources, you want to trade with South Africa or the Raj. Doesn't really matter which one you pick first. I'll go over the Raj here. Alright, once you got this done, you actually want to start off by doing these. 
These are actually really good bonuses for the war. You'll have this one issued by the war if you start around the late 40, uh, which is more than good. They're good for both your infantry and your tanks, so it's very good bonuses to get. All right, go for Logi 2 once Logi 1 is done. Very important. And you also want to fix the trade here at all times. Sometimes you actually want to have a co-op doing it for you so you can focus on other stuff or you just do this and your co-op does some other stuff. But like, it's good to split up the work in between the players. We have- yes, uh, uh, Lime! Dude, you lost the tank for no reason! I told you not to push and you lost the tank! No, I told you not to- he told me not to micro it, so I stopped microing it. Uh, you guys are a big pair of memers. Alright. After maintenance 2, it's already really good that you got maintenance 2. You want to go all the way for uh, Engineer 3. Engineer 3 gives you a 10% attack bonus of reverse, which is really good. Also, entrenchment on your tanks is good, but like mostly it's about getting this bonus. Uh, for your counterattacks, your counterattacks can happen late, they can happen early. I'd still recommend you go for around this time because uh, it's good to have um, Engineer 3 somewhere around before 42. All right, you got the heavy SPA. What do I do now, Dinks? Yes, you wanna. <laughs> well, I don't have the XP in this playthrough, but let me just say you go as much anti-air armament is possible nowhere heavy tank Russia relies on this bad boy you pop like 10 on top of it and 10 is a bit overkill I'll go 5 and then you want to click on the conversion button uh, that will help you just getting everything out much quicker once you got this research also you want to click on some other research I guess now you could go for construction um, it is debatable if you want to do these, if you're going for like a long-term ass build where you want these as early as possible for the long-term build. I'll just go for this now to get the x 4 because the allies will need way more resources later. Trust me, if this is vanilla, USA is going to be sitting around 300 mils, around mid-41, uh, more probably. Uh, so definitely you'll need that. No, 400 mil. No, no, no. So USA is going to be sitting at 300 mils, around 42. But that's also very resource intensive all right you got the next doctrine around this time you should have enough xp to click this one of the xp so i'm just gonna give myself xp again because you will have xp at this point usually to do the next doctrines with xp all right you got this one as i said you want to go for like the third and even the fourth one you want to keep this one on this till that's done then you go all the way here for like this stuff you want to go for the soft attack etc down here all right now that you got that done you want to go for recon too you won't have this by the war you have it slightly after the war started ish i think uh we'll see but like yeah you want to go for recon around this time <coughs> you got the engineer two now you want to go engineer three very poggers so you get the 10 percent river across attack now you go for excavation after construction four. Very good. So once your heavy line starts ending here, you want to put in another line of heavies. Uh, very fucking needed. Uh, also, if you see like, oh, I'm not going to have an F uh, SPA by war, just make sure you pump it up so you will have enough SPA by war. Uh, it's not worth having too little. It's better they have too much SPA than too little. Uh, since I'm on concentrate also this efficiency builds up slowly and then later on we'll have way more and then we can cut this down to like five Slash four slash three. It really depends, but I'd say you can cut it down to five later most likely Also, go ahead and pop a war propaganda against the German Reich Even though you're hundred percent war support you want to do that just because you're gonna be last standing a lot of vanilla Last standing loses uh, makes you lose some war support and you don't want to go below it You should also have a lot of PP since you're not picking any focuses. So uh, you'll definitely have enough PP for that. All right, around here, Germany's going to declare war. So what do you need to think about as your last thingies you need to do before the war starts? I like to go down limited. Sometimes you can stay export just to help out the allies, but it is pretty nice to go down to limited. If you go total mob and you get like so many more mills that it just 
a nuisance to trade while you're war so i'm going to go ahead and do that also you want to go ahead and do the constantine the uh, general what's called uh, the uh, armor division attack guy uh, beyond that you also want to do either you could do the army xp gain guy way earlier i didn't use a lot of the pp as you might see uh, army xp gain guy is pretty good for getting your stuff uh, for getting your xp for all your tanks i usually pick him actually around sometimes 38 by the china warish but i didn't do it today i don't know really like he, he is useful he definitely is but like uh he's not needed but uh, you could definitely pick him if you feel like him. You could do a different order. You don't need this guy earlier. You don't need even need the motorization company. I'd say right now you could also go over to the infantry company if you want to. Uh, you also want to click the regrouping guy. You also want to click the concealment guy. That means enemy air support is minus 10%. So enemy air support is a, bo a debuff you get when, the, uh, when you're defending and you hover over your defense in the in the air tile or in the uh, in the battle you hover over your defense in the battle and it says enemy air support and you get minus defense from that right that means that the enemy cast makes or air superiority rather right gives you less defense and you having uh what's called you having just that bonus gives them 10 percent less of that bonus against you so it's useful to pick. You don't need any of the Navy and Air guys unless you're doing an air build, which you're not right now. But uh, I'd recommend you definitely go for uh, this guy earlier. You have plenty of PP now by Barb anyhow. You only need 150-ish by Barb. Uh, you could do this better macro-wise, but also like you can see the economy 175 mils by wartime is not a great result. Uh, only due to it being single per mostly. Uh, also, you need to produce more SPA earlier. I'd say you even want to put like 30 days onto the SPA research-wise maybe. But it doesn't really matter in the end. You should have enough of everything if you're in a multiplayer game because you'll have literally uh, almost twice the industry of this. Not twice, but you'll have 250 to 300 mils usually. Uh, if you're not even doing a macro-intensive macro build, you'll have 250 to 300 mils easily. Um... So yeah, it should definitely be easy for you to get at least 200 on tanks by the war. Um, yeah, like 30 on mech is a good ratio if you have around 200 on tanks by war. And you're also going to have a lot more tanks then. So the ratios should be way better then. You'll need to go up on mech later on during the war most likely because of the losses and because of you outproducing the mech with tanks way too much. You are supposed to outproduce the mech with tanks, but not to an extent where you don't have enough mech and you have too many tanks, right? Uh, here you can see that we have enough AA for this many divisions and a bit more. You could train up because we have 130k gun stockpile. I guess you could keep like two two on AA. By the time I went down on AA, and you'll have enough for everybody. Uh, again, not needed. So let's go over the templates you want to have done by this time. You want to have the military police template. You don't need it. As I said you don't need it, but. For these states, for example, just to get the compliance up, the resistance down, it doesn't get the compliance up more, but it gets the resistance down quicker. So beyond that, you want to have the 20 woods with the AA support AA that gives the, uh, you take 70% less cast damage just from having a support AA in your division, which is just huge since Germany relies on cast to shoot down, uh, to shoot you down on bar basically, right? And uh, this also kills a lot of vanilla. They're very cost efficient. This is like the most cost efficient equipment you can build in vanilla. So I'd say definitely keep two on this. Um, but you also want to have trained a lot of these guys. These are 40 XP divisions, as I like to call them. Um, they're 40 woods. They're XP. Basically, they have 20,000 manpower, which is more than 18,400 manpower. So when you make one of these guys, you want to you wanna train them up. When they're in the field, you train them up to level 3. And when you convert them to a heavy tank, they become level 2 and a bit more than level 2. So that's basically getting your tanks trained up without having to train them. And when you're fighting right now, so let's say you're fighting Germany, right? So you need two tanks quickly. Do you want to train two tanks in the training queue and wait till fucking what? Like January 42 when you're in June? No, you don't. You just take two of these bad boys right here you convert them like you literally straight up convert them like this to the heavy tank 
and you won't have any it won't take any time to reinforce with manpower which is the one that the the thing that takes the longest some mods, uh, some mods fix this that it doesn't take long at all to reinforce with manpower but they'll also keep a lot of the xp you have trained them up with which is great because then you'll got trained tanks straight out of nowhere it's fucking great heavy tank template is the last thing uh, this is what I make. Uh, I like to make mine look like. I sometimes you can make like you can make uh, the cavalry recon detachment instead, just a normal recon AK that you know. Uh, but I like to do the motorization one. It does bring up some of the stats a little bit, but since you already have one on it, why not? Also it brings up your recon, which is good. And uh, yeah, you definitely want to do that. Higher recon means better tra uh, better tactics. Yes, esports. Maintenance company brings up your uh, it's called equipment capture ratio, but also your uh, reliability. Um, so you also want to go for the logistics for your units consume less supply here. It would take another one supply per zone. And that means here, for example, it's 12 out of 78. And uh, let's say we put a lodge in them. Let's say they all consume five right now, right? Uh, then it all consumes one less per division which is a lot in the end. So you want to do that. Also, it preserves uh, fuel better, right? So fuel usage goes down and it actually ups your reliability a little bit. It's not great, but like if you want to go for an army, uh, uh, what's called the armor strat like this, you want to have high armor in your templates and you remove these, then it ups the armor, which is a good thing. But Germany won't be able to pierce you like this anyhow, unless he has like heavy tank destroyers or like for tank destroyers, like medium tank destroyers with max gun, which is pretty expensive to make. So this is a very cost efficient-ish build this Russia, if you know what I mean, because you make your enemy put so much production onto being able to even push you that you've already made your yourself, your build more cost efficient, right? So that's why heavy tank Germany is the best of them all. Also signals, last off, uh, initiative is good. And it also it gives you with all uh, planning bonus, no, planning speed quicker, right? You get quicker planning speed. Uh, but other than this, this is something it could look like. You could you could even toy around with this yourself. You could make it like one less mech, one more tank, or you could even go for like the the more uh, reliability strat where you put um, where instead of you putting armor on your tanks, you do like uh, nine or ten mech, right? And you remove tanks to compensate. They still have great stats. They get more defense, which is not needed. They get higher HP. This is very important. They request. Uh, they also uh, require less. Um, less. Uh, what's it called cost to make the tank. This one is fourteen thousand to sixteen thousand. The normal tank template I just showed you was fifteen to seventeen point eight. Right. So it is like two thousand IC. We're talking here, uh, which is. Could be a lot, you know, in mobile player games. You could get a lot more tanks out by just making your tank look different and have a little bit less stats, which is fine. It also brings up your org putting more mech in and less tanks, which is great buff, great buff, really a great buff. Uh, six more org. Uh, well, really, the, you, you can toy around with this yourself. I also did a template tutorial that you can watch about this. But really, this is... Um, you just want to train up your infantry for the war. You want to train up these XP divisions, convert them to tanks when you need them. And uh, that should have helped you enough to be able to play Russia in your first multiplayer game. Uh, don't go into any tryhard lobbies, I'd recommend. Uh, really don't. Uh, you're going to get trashed on. Uh, e either way, you're going to get trashed on if you join a competitive lobby. Uh, but join like a historical game. Try this out. It should work. Um, now, if you got some questions about where you want to hold, you could come into my Twitch, etc., and ask questions. I'm always free to answer them. Uh, but you got the basic strategies. You got the river line, all the river line by holding the tabs also, which is the one place they can push across easily. Uh, you can hold the four styles here before the river line and be able to push Germany early on, inflicting a lot of losses into Germany. You can hold the marshes, which I always recommend you actually do because it's really hard for Germany to push it out. Even infantry is hard to push out with tanks sometimes, unless you got the Amtrak tanks as Germany, the same for the river. Uh, holding Kiev here is pretty easy. If you got like three, two to three t heavy tanks on each tile here, keep on reinforcing when you get pushed out, you know. Uh, but yeah, you got the basic strategies. The fallback lines are, well, 
whatever river, forest tiles, etc. you can find by not getting in circle there either. You don't want to sit in like a random ass area here. You got these, these forest tiles. Biggest mistake I'd see a lot of people make. Um, I encircled so much here in so many games. By me just as Germany pushing here, pushing all the south here, and a co-op or a somebody just pushes across the river here. Now you're sitting here as Russia, right? What do you do? Do you stay or do you get out because you're an encirclement risk here, right? Because this is all plain tiles around you. But it's a good place to hold if you hold these tiles and you can push out Germany if he goes for you. But so many Russias don't have the defense prepared here and they have such a thick defense here with tanks, etc. that they end up getting encircled, they're out of fuel, they die and then it's just an easy push to Moscow. So think about preserving your tanks no matter what. You can do risky plays, but remember to always preserve your tanks. Losing tanks are not worth the risk of you killing tanks, usually. Um, you could say, oh, that's pussy strat. Yes, yes, it is. It is. And pussies win war. No, actually, they don't. I'm Swedish. But listen, in the Hoi 4, preserving your shit until you're actually ready to push is the best strategy. That's why some people in, like, Bokoan games shoot up Barba year. They're like, okay, we can't attack this year. We're not ready to push. Pushing now would be a death trap. Same thing here, right? Like, going to war with Russia right now would be a death trap for us. We don't have enough tanks. They have more tanks. They could kill us this year. Uh, so they wait a year till they're actually ready, and then they push. Same thing with Russia. You're not maybe ready to push Germany day one. You need to wait a year. That's fine. You wait a year. You preserve your things. And then in a year, you're ready to push. But what if you push while you're not ready? Then you won't be ready for another year. It just takes longer. If you want to push as early as possible, the best thing to do is wait till you're ready. But yeah, boys, I hope this helped. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah. But what you got to remember, the most important focus that you got to click when you go to war. You will lose every game if you don't click this, right? You got to click the get a go from focus. We need to take a shower for that. Yellow tape around his body.